Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to EA Global Summit 2020. This is Madhav from the organizing team, and we have uh, Dr. Haas uh, from uh, Liba Liba. Uh, he wears multiple hats uh, by being a trainer, consultant, and an author. And we'll uh, be looking at the topic meta modeling, and we'll be focusing primarily on uh, the constraints that are uh, in the EAS default capabilities and how they can be solved using the extensions uh, with the other features. And uh, just to uh, remind you, we'll take up the questions at the end and uh, please feel free to post it at any time. We'll definitely take it to heart. And if in case uh, your questions, we don't have enough time to answer them within this session, we'll uh, post them in Teams channel and uh, you can take it up with Horst and his team there. Thanks. Uh, thank you all again for coming and uh, over to you, Host. Okay, thank you. Um, good. Show my screen. Good. Yeah, I would like to welcome uh, you to this afternoon session of my talk. Um, it is about, yeah, here we are. Yeah. As already mentioned, my name is Horst Kage, um, and uh, my talk today uh, is actually part one, part five. I will solve this puzzle in the end of my talk. Uh, the series is about how to succeed with a modeling approach using Enterprise Architect, and today it is about uh, meta models and meta modeling. Uh, actually, uh, I am from Spark Systems Central Europe, uh, but, but as, as mentioned, I wear a lot of hats. Yeah. So uh, Spark Systems Central Europe is a sister company of Spark uh, Systems Headquarter. Uh, Spark Systems Central Europe, as Spark Systems Central Europe, we provide licenses and trainings. And as a Spark Service uh, Central Europe, we uh, provide consultings and uh, customizations around Enterprise Architect. Um, and we are located in, in Vienna, in Austria, uh, in Central Europe. And as you may know, uh, our colleagues uh, in Australia, the headquarter is next to Melbourne in the southern part of Victoria. Good. The agenda for today is I'm going to talk about the theory about uh, meta models, models, and meta meta models, and how to do this in Enterprise Architect using UML profiles, uh, meta constraints, meta model constraints, uh, additional valid. Uh, validation possibilities, so how to use additional validation possibilities in Enterprise Architect, and how to put everything together in an NDG technology. Good. First, what is a meta model? This is this is uh, often uh, a question. So uh, the term meta model uh, sounds so really spooky, but it's actually pretty simple. This is what what I try to to explain in this uh, theory session. So the meta model itself is actually a model about the model. Meta-modeling is the process of creating such a meta-model. Good. To get into it, let's, let's consider an example. So this is a simple model. It looks like a UML class diagram. Actually, it is a UML class diagram. So we have a class company, we have a class person, a uh, person can be uh, employed at company, the company plays the role of the, of the employer, a uh, person can be employed at zero to infinite uh, companies, company has a name, and a company uh, has employees, at least one, um, can, have, can also have infinite uh, persons as also names. And there is also an, a second relation which, which says who is the managing director, which is actually a subset of uh, the set of employees. So if I create instances of this model, I can model companies like uh, Spark System Central Europe and uh, Horst Kagel and Hans Bartmann, which is the CEO. Yeah. So actually, the model on top is a model, but it is a meta model because we say this is a meta model, and the instance instance of this model is our model. So the meta model is now a model of a model. And the model is an instance of this meta model. Good. The graphical representation can look differently. So what we see here is not actually the model. It's just the instantiation of the model and the data which are stored according to this meta model. 
So we can also say the meta model is a kind of schema, like an XML schema. Yeah? And the graphical representation may, may look different. So this is just a possible graphical notation for this, for this meta model and this data. Um, I will show you a, a different one. This is um, a meta model, a really simplification of a meta model of the UML uh, meta model, which consists of uh, actors, use cases, and an association. And there is a meta model element called a connectable element. So an, a con, an actor can be connected and a use case can be connected with an association. The instantiation uh, could look like this. Yeah, actor has an association. Actor is the source association to target use case. And the concrete um, notation looks like this. So the point here is uh, if we have an a link, a connector uh, within our concrete syntax, within our model. There's also a meta class which represents this connector. There is the possibility, again, this is just a short uh, and, and simplification, a short way to, to express it, uh, that we express here. Uh, uh, we use here an association in order to say that an actor can be connected with an association with a use case. but uh, complete uh, meta models uh, always have um, a meta model class for for associations or links in general as well. Good. Um, what is a model now? So here we have the meta model. We saw the meta model. We have the instantiations. But what is the model? Yeah, of course we know uh, a model is a simplified representation of a certain reality, and modeling the process is uh, the process and methods building of building models of a specific purpose. So to create models of a certain reality. So in this case, the model is a model of the reality, but the reality is not really an instance of the model, like the model here is an instance of the meta model. So the model itself represents the reality. So that's the aim of it, yeah, good. So now, if we take the point of view uh, on this level, we can say that this is the model, and whatever is above is the meta model, and whatever is below is an instance of this model with this execution here, yeah, uh, exception here. Um, this is a representation. But if we shift the point of view, remember in my first slide, or with the example, uh, the company and the person, is a model, it's a UML class diagram actually, um, but it's on the meta model level, but it is a model. So if we take this point of view, uh, the meta model is a model, and the level below is an instantiation of this model, and the level above is the meta model of this level. So there is something above this uh, meta model, and it's called the meta meta model. Yeah? And the meta meta model again is a model of the meta model, and the meta model is an instance of this meta meta model. Yeah? And now we can play the game again and say, okay, if we take this point of view, then what we see here is again a model, and this can also be or will also look like a UML class diagram. So the meta meta model is also a UML class diagram model. Yeah. And the level below is again the instantiation of uh, this meta meta model. So here we have our our meta model, which which is an instance of the meta meta model. But what is the meta model of the meta meta model? Maybe the meta 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 model could be, but there's a trick. We can also say no. Um, the meta the meta model of the meta meta model is the meta meta model itself. So it's an instance of its own. So this is a trick, um, like the natural language grammar is written in natural language. So we can use the language we are defining to define the language. So, but actually there are always a kind of type instance uh, relations between each, each level. Yeah? So this is the model, this is the instance of the model. This is the model, this is the instance of the model, or here, model and instance. So it just depends on the, on the point of view so if we say this is the point of view and we say this is my model, then this is the language stack. And each level of this language stack 
uh, has got the number because on each level we are dealing with models in, for instance class diagram models and it depends um, how the uh, how this class diagram is interpreted if we say this class diagram is on level m2 we are dealing with meta models and the meta model is always a language definition so the model here represents a modeling language and the model is a model uh, which conforms to this meta model to this modeling language and the meta meta model on level M3 is a model which is described by, by itself. So it's also a modeling language for defining modeling languages. The models on level M2. So, and this is the, the OMG's uh, language stack. And uh, to make it more precise, it looks like this. Uh, the OMG's language stack is based on uh, the meta object facility, which is a language uh, on level M3. And by the way, the MOF itself, as you can see, is part of the core of UML. So this is the UML infrastructure, is the UML superstructure. MOF itself is actually the UML class diagram, which is described in the UML class diagram and used to describe the modeling language UML. So here on level M2, we are able to define the modeling language UML. We can use MOF. Uh, the meta object facility to uh, model other modeling languages like CVM, the common uh, warehouse model, and others. Why I'm telling you this? Because uh, the most important thing here is the UML profile. Yeah? The thing is, uh, if we think about modeling tools, modeling tools are implementing modeling languages, uh, like implementing UML or other modeling languages. Um, and the tools uh, are aware of the, the concepts, the types of the modeling language. So to extend now uh, a modeling language, we have three uh, different ways to do this. We can, for instance, create our own meta model. We can extend the, the existing meta model, or we can use the profile mechanism. Uh, in the first two, the tools, mm, do not uh, know what, what are the new concepts. So if I create a new, completely new meta model, uh, the tools may not know what, what these concepts are about and how to, how to, how to handle this. And therefore, um, the UML profile me mechanism uh, can be used. So if a tool like Enterprise Architect is implementing the UML profile, um, the tool uh, is able to work with profiles. And as you can see here on level M1, which is my actual model. I have my model, I have your model, and there is a, a profile model. So here we can define extensions of, of uh, the UML uh, modeling language, and this can be used in, in the model. Uh, actually, the OMG specification says that the UML profile can be applied to a single package, but in Enterprise Architect currently, uh, the profile is always applied to a whole uh, project. And by the way, SysML uh, is also a UML profile, the current version of, of SysML. But there is a, a, an ongoing um, project request for proposal for SysML 2.0, which is already in a draft state, uh, and it has got its own uh, meta model. But there will be also an, uh, an implementation as, as UML profile. So now let's have a closer look at this uh, profile mechanism. The UML specification uh, says that, yeah, it is on level M2. So this model is a, a, a modeling language. Part, the part uh, which, which defines how uh, UML profiles are defined. But I have a simpler version of it um, to, to explain it. So this is just this really simplified representation of it. So UML profile is a package. And the package consists of stereotypes, which is a class. So these are the own stereotypes of the profile. And a class may get owned attributes, which is a property, yeah? So we have attributes. Uh, and these attributes of a stereotype provide additional meta informations, uh, which can be applied to a model element when the stereotype is applied. So here I have skipped the, the extension relation, which is this one. 
So this is the, 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 the concrete notation of, of the meta model part. So a UML profile, when you model it, looks like this. So here we have the package profile. Here we, we get meta classes from UML. We extend the meta class and say, this is my stereotype, my special actor with an additional property. Yeah? And this additional property will be uh, came uh, attacked value in the model in the end. Good. So this is this is how the profile mechanism works. And because uh, tools are aware of this uh, profile meta model, every tool can ha handle every uh, profile. So it's easy to extend UML and um, and exchange models. So now let's go back to our simple example. I have extended it already a bit. So I have introduced an, an abstract uh, meta class here uh, called named element. So I have I did a, a kind of refactoring. I, I moved uh, the, the names uh, into this common class here, and uh, company and person inherits from it. So this is a common approach, especially in meta modeling. But uh, this is a general uh, uh, object-oriented um, technique. So what do you have to do now? In order to, to use this meta model in Enterprise Architect, we have trans to transform this meta model into a UML profile. Yeah. So here we have to do a few things. We have to think about what concepts um, do we, uh, is, is a company representing, what, uh, what is a person, what is a named element, because we have to extend the UML meta model. I did it this way. So here I have my profile, which is called my company language. I have my stereotypes. Yeah, I have my stereotypes and uh, I have decided to extend uh, everything from the meta class class. So this is the class in UML. If one concept of the meta model is more a kind of behavior, we should use another meta class like a state machine or uh, an activity, or if it's a call of a behavior, or we have to use a call behavior action. Good. So these are the, the concepts, but what about these relations? Remember, uh, within the meta model, an association do not necessarily mean that there should be an association in my concrete language. Uh, this uh, association just says that if we collect the data, if we instantiate this, this meta model, uh, a company knows its person and how this is represented, it's up to the concrete syntax. But in this case, I translate this association and I introduce an association. Yeah. So I would like to have associations between person and company in order to say that the company uh, has employees and uh, reference these employees. So therefore, um, I have uh, used the meta class association and I have extended my stereotypes, managing director and employed at, yeah, which corresponds to these two uh, links here. So the concrete uh, UML profile looks like this. So we have additional types, additional elements, company, uh, persons and two connectors, managing director and employed at. But we can reuse or we can use this managing director and employed at also in a maybe unwanted way. For instance, if we have a use case and an actor, we can also use an association. And because there is a stereotype for associations, we can also use managing director whenever we use associations. So there's no further constraint. So we could have an use case and an actor with a managing director uh, association, which is correct based on this uh, UML profile. In order to have more constraints, uh, we can use uh, constraint meta models or meta model constraints in Enterprise Architect. Um, it looks like this. And by the way, uh, these meta model constraints uh, is actually a UML profile by its own. So it is actually a UML dependency with a stereotype meta constraint and an additional tag value UML role. And because this 
is a meta constraint for uh, associations or for links in general, yeah, we can use the meta constraint uh, source and target in order to say that the association managing director can start from person and end at the company. The same with the employed at um, association. Yeah, start from person. So this is the, the source end and this is the target end. Concrete example, yeah, could look like this. So here I have my model, uh, my UML profile model lifted on level M2 and I'm using it as an extension of uh, the modeling language and this is my model. Yeah. So here I have a company, I have a person and here you see, or well, let's go back then you can see it in more details. I have used a few um, additional uh, properties in Enterprise Architect uh, profiles. I have used the meta type in order to say that um, this is not a class with a stereotype person, it should be a person. So when, when we have this uh, and we create a person, then you see on the surface of Enterprise Architect that the type is person and not class with stereotype. Of course, the stereotype is, is, is also visible, but the, the type will be represented as person. And here I have added uh, an image with a shape script and these uh, um, properties leads to this uh, alternate shapes. So you can you can define any shape. There are also conditional shapes. So this is really powerful feature. Depending on the data which you have collected in your model, uh, the shape uh, can can be uh, yeah, different one or can change depending on the configuration of the person uh, model element. So let's have a look in in enterprise architect how it looks like here. So here we have it. Here we have our tool box, and if I create a new person, yeah, uh, you see that this automatically named person. Ah, uh, yeah, this uh, this is not a, an enterprise architect feature. This is an extension, a plugin called Modeling Assistance, uh, which which shows me uh, elements of same type in order to reuse existing one. Yeah. So if I click on this, uh, so I have reused another uh, person which already exists from another, um, from the complex constraint uh, package. Yeah, so if I have created this, you see that the type is person, but there is still this, this stereotype available. Good, if I create a company, yeah, uh, and I connect them, I have my employee and managing director uh, connectors in my toolbox, yeah, and if I say company and uh, employed at a uh, person. That's actually not true. The company is not employed at, the person is employed at uh, the company, but because um, of our uh, because of uh, our meta model constraint, the connector is always drawn in the right direction because remember here, I've said the source is always the person and the target is the company. So, And here is an example um, of uh, using uh, the managing director connector uh, between an actor and a use case. Um, but how is this possible? Because I have uh, my meta model constraint. Yeah, well, uh, it's not that easy. For instance, if I try to, to create here uh, the link with a quick link, it's not contained in the quick link. Um, if I create a um, new model, yeah, like this use case. I can use my toolbox, my link from the toolbox, but here the validation works already, so it's not possible to, to create this. Uh, it's important to have one configuration set. Here in my, my uh, local installation of Enterprise Architect, I can go to my preferences. And within the preferences, I can, I could disable strict connector syntax. Then these uh, constraints are not uh, proved. So, but I have enabled it, so it's it's proved already. So, but there is the possibility to create first an association, yeah, and then I can set the stereotype 
Maybe in future versions this of Enterprise Architect this will also not be possible, but so far it is possible. But in the end, there's always the possibility to validate this model. So if I select a package and click on model validation, so here, design, um, manage, validate, validate current package. Uh, it's a good, uh, I think I selected the wrong package. Yeah, this one. So, validate. So here I have two pieces with invalid uh, connectors. So I can easily find them. Good. So, uh, based on this meta model constraints, uh, I get uh, uh, automatically quick link entries. So we do not need to to define uh, an Excel sheet with all the quick linker rules anymore. We can simply use this uh, meta model constraints. And this meta model constraints is also considered uh, during model validation automatically. And there are many, many more uh, of these meta model constraints which can be found in Enterprise Arctic Help. Like there is a constraint for classifier or type. So if an element can be typed by another type, we can constrain this. Or um, if uh, a call behavior action um, should get a specific behavior, we can restrict the kind of behavior or the conveyed item of an information flow and so on. I have prepared a few examples. This is uh, another example which, uh, with a stereotype module, which is derived from class, uh, a signal flow, which is derived from or extending uh, at an information flow. And here again, because this is a connector, I have used the source and target constraint. So the signal flow is only allowed between modules, so classes with stereotype modules. And because this is an information flow, I have added uh, a constraint, a meta constraint conveyed. And I've said that only signals are allowed on a signal flow. So this rule leads to the fact that when I have my models, modules, and I create the link, I get automatically this information item conveyed. And if I click on add, I get this dialog, which contains the constraint. So I can only select signals. Good. Other example. Um, I have a stereotype technical signal with an additional uh, attribute, uh, which leads to a, um, a tech value. I have inherited this technical signal from SysML block. So this is also possible. We can extend existing modeling languages available in Enterprise Architect. And the block itself is uh, derived from class or extending the class. The same here with data. So the data is a special flow property, which is actually a part or property. And here I have two additional constraints. Here, the first one, the technical signal has owned elements or structured elements, what, what's also uh, a term often used. But in the UML meta model, you find it uh, uh, in, with the text owned elements. Yeah. And because of this rule, uh, Enterprise Architect provides in the user interface uh, a new entry when we select a technical signal, right click on it and say, add new child element. Yeah, I also find data now because of this constraint. I still find pool port, proxy port and port because my technical signal is an extension of UML block, uh, SysML blocks, sorry. And a SysML block may get full port and proxy port and from the UML class, uh, we get a port. So it's just an extension of it. So the other um, constraint here, owner, provides an additional rule because if we just have this one, the data can be used like this. So I can use data also in classes. But if I have this uh, additional meta constraint, I can say that data are owned, the owner of the data is a technical signal. If I have this constraint, the model validation will automatically find inconsistencies and say, okay, uh, the owner of data must be a technical signal. And that's a, that's a class. Good. Another example here, I have a sender stereotype, which is a special signal port. Signal port has a speed in my, my language. 
yeah, which is a port. So a signal port is a port. Uh, again, this is an abstract stereotype because I have another um, stereotype, a sender and a receiver. But here, in this example, I just showed a sender. And the sender may be typed by technical signal. So this is the what we know already, a technical signal is a block, uh, which is a class. So if I have now uh, a block with a, with a sender, with a port sender, the type of this sender is restricted to technical signal. So if I press, if I select this port and press Control L, or if I use the context menu, advanced set property type, I will get this select property type dialog and here we see already the restrictions. So only classes with stereotype technical signals are allowed. Yeah. If I, I manage to do it something, to do it wrong somehow, model validation will find this issue and say, yeah, the port, which is a sender, must be typed by a technical signal. Good. But what about additional constraints? Here we have we have the the meta model, and within the meta model we have uh, I have added multiplicities. Yeah? So which says that the company must at least has uh, one employee attached, and there is a maximum uh, amount of uh, CEOs allowed. Yeah. Um, again, if we transform this in 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 the UML profile with the metamol constraints, we could add this additional um, multiplicities in uh, in the metamol as well in the UML profile as well. But unfortunately, this is currently not considered in model validation out of the box. But I was told from the development team in Australia that this will hopefully be supported in one of the future versions of Enterprise Architect. But Enterprise Architect is a is a powerful framework which which allows uh, uh, which allows it to be extended, and there are already ways to also cope with this. But there are also uh, constraints which cannot be expressed in a meta model uh, with with a, with a class diagram features. Yeah, like here I have extended now this this meta model with with two other uh, concepts. So here I have a university. And I have a project, and the project can, or university, a company, and a person can be part of this project. I have added uh, additional multiplicity, so uh, the project has at least one uh, person, which is part of. Person can maximum be uh, part of three uh, projects, and here it's zero to infinite. Yeah, so I could create the model, for instance. Um, which uh, with a person, which is a, uh, in which a person is part of this project, but it's not uh, part of a company or a university. Therefore, I have added an additional constraint. A uh, project must has a part of relation from at least one company or university. So it can have both and, and both in any number, but at least one of them must, must be set. Yeah. Um, there is a there's an easy way to do this with an XOR constraint, but XOR doesn't fit here because it's not either or. It can be both as well. Yeah. So therefore, we need this kind of constraint. And a more complex constraint, for instance, if there are more than one persons part of the project. So if more than one person is part of the project, this implies yeah, so that at least one company and at least one University must also be part of this project. Yeah. If there is only one, then this must not be true. Good. So how to how to cope with this additional constraints? So we can use the platform framework features of Enterprise Architect in order to customize um, and add these additional uh, validations. There are different ways to do this. Uh, a really simple way to do this is uh, using SQL searches. Uh, in combination with uh, model views, yeah. Then within the model view, I would see all the all the elements with issues. I can use the Enterprise Architect API, or yeah, there are many other framework features. Um, with the API, we can use scripts, uh, add-ins, or model add-ins. 
uh, in the next slides I will focus on, on add-ins and how to how to use uh, again it's a framework the model validation framework uh, of enterprise architect in order to add this additional uh, validations so first we have to transform the meta model again into a UML profile which uh, looks like this so these are the, the, the new concepts I have added the university yeah, the project and here this relations within the meta model again I represent this with um, an association and the meta model constraints can be applied like this again I'm using the meta constraint UML role source and target yeah the company the person and the university may be used as source and the project may be used as target. So, uh, but what about the constraints? Uh, like uh, if more than one person is a part of a project, at least one university and one company must be also part of the project. So if I model something like this, this will be valid uh, based on, on the pure Yoma class diagram. But I'm missing a company because of this additional constraint here. Good. So how to find such such uh, model violations? Um, we can use the Enterprise Architect API, and this would be the implementation of the rule, which looks yeah, it's not that big, but it's uh, are already a few lines. I, I will explain it shortly. And uh, yeah, of, uh, of course there. Are, there are um, informations about the Enterprise Architect API uh, at uh, block uh, sparksystems.de. You just search for Enterprise Architect API, and there is a, a complete example of a model validation. Uh, you, you can find it on the, on the Sparks page. So this, um, here we are. So this is the model validation example in the help file. And this is the core of the Enterprise Architect API. It's, com it's not complete yet, it's just the core. And here we also find just a subset of it. But this is a good starting point to get into, into the API and, in order to, to browse the model. Yeah, so here we have the packages with sub packages, elements, diagrams. Uh, elements may be connected with connectors. We have connector ends and the graphical representation of it. Good. So here, this is the validation rule. So we get an element, and because we just want to prove the projects, we check the meta type. And if I'm asking here for a meta type, I get, so this is important. Uh, uh, this only works if you have set the meta type in your UML profile. The actual rule is here. Here, if I'm counting more than one person, the second part here, this is kind of if then else, a short way of if then else. So if I'm counting more than one, the second part here is evaluated, otherwise returned true, because then everything is fine. So if I'm counting more than one person, here I have two, I need to count uh, at least one university and one company. If this is not true, this is false. Yeah. So I'm, I have found um, a wrong model. So the project has a violation. And here is the, the part which counts. So I'm just iterating through all these uh, connectors, which must be of part of type part of. Then I get the opposite uh, of this connector. There is an easy way to get opposite. So each element has an ID. And if the ID is the client, ID is, which is the source connector end, then the opposite is the target or supplier, otherwise it's the client. And with the help of the repository, I can get the model element. So repository get element by ID. And here you have to be aware that um, get element by ID may arise an exception. So this should be in a try catch in order to prevent uh, yeah, exceptions in the validation. And here we just count. Yeah, If the meta type is university, we count in university and so on. Yeah, and the rule is already clear. So this is a simple uh, implementation of this uh, of this rule. And if we use the uh, model validation example and implement a few a few lines, the most important lines here 
I've extracted is uh, on initialize user role. Yeah, we configure uh, the categories and actually we are also configuring, yeah, here uh, the rules. Um, this is the part what you find in the in the model validation example. The most important uh, calls of the API is to get in, uh, to create a, a, a rule category. This is what you will find in Enterprise Architect when you go to Manage, Validate, Configure. Yeah, this is what you find here. And here we define the rules. Yeah, the rules uh, should get the, the ID of the category. We say what kind of error it is and the error message. And when we find an, uh, an issue, this is how we publish it. So we say project publish. Um, we get the, the, um, the rule um, number. So this is still part of, of the implementation. We see again what kind of error it is and what's the error message. So this is how we, how we implement uh, model validation rules with the validation framework of Enterprise Architect. Um, but there is also uh, a, a, an easier way to, to write uh, rules. Of course, you have to do something, um, but it's possible to extend the Enterprise Athlete API. Uh, we did it, for instance, um, I have added here a few, a few extension methods to get a more fluent API. This is the same rule, uh, but it's easier to, to, to create, to, to define. So again, this uh, operation is called. Uh, I get, I'm only considering projects. Yeah? And here I'm checking, uh, give me all the connectors of type part of to uh, an element of type person, and then count these connectors. And if this is bigger than one, it implies, this is a logical expression, yeah, implies. So if the left hand side here is true, the left hand side must also be true. Yeah. So here we count again, a part of relations to universities, it must be bigger than one, and a part of relations to company must also be bigger than one. If this is true, the, the right hand, if the left-hand side is true, the right-hand side must be true as well. And this is the return of this uh, call. And there is also a more integrated way to, to do this. Instead of writing now um, model validation implementations, there will be hopefully soon the possibility. So, for instance, to to add this this metamol constraints also in the in the stereotype. This is just a name, but as a notes, we can write the implementation text. And this is something which maybe also come uh, sometimes from from Sparks Australia, but it will come from. Uh, Lieber Lieber, uh, within the modeling assistance, the, the, the extension of Enterprise Architect, the point here is that we can just write the code directly in our UML profile. Then this code is uh, generated and compiled on the fly and executing during uh, model validation. There is no need to, to, to write uh, add-ins uh, in order to, to do model validations. Also really complex. Um, constraints. Good. Um, a few more examples about these fluent uh, uh, rules. For instance, um, if we have a model like this, yeah, a person has a part of relation to a project and accidentally I, I, I drew it two times, yeah, which makes no sense in, in for this language here. Of course, if we extend the language and say, okay, here the person is part of a project and the person uh, plays a, a specific role. So if we have more semantic in a part of, it would make sense to have multiple part of relations. But just to say that person is part of a project, I do not need two uh, connectors, two part of connectors. So in order to, to find all these duplicated part of relations, again, I can write uh, a validation rule and this is how to do this. Again, this is the operation. We get uh, an, an, an element because we are uh, validating an element. 
And here we check if this, uh, for this element, if there is a, a connector of type part of. If this is the case, we, we generate a kind of key. So in order to, to identify duplicates, so if the key, which consists of the client ID, the supplier ID, and the meta type, if this occurs uh, multiple times between um, yeah, within my, my list of connectors, um, I, I count and increase my counter. And if I have counted already two, um, the wrestle is already two, so there are duplicates, yeah? And again, there is, uh, this is the plain enterprise architecture API, but there is also a an, an more easy way to, to do this. Um, with um, enterprise architect API and extensions here, uh, I've used custom extensions, similar one as, as previously. So I get the connectors of a specific type, which are pointing to a specific element, project, and then I'm using a link yeah, in C-sharp. But this is not that easy to read. Yeah? Um, and to, to write this a second time, you really have to uh, know link. Yeah? Um, what, what we do here, we group by element ID, then we skip all elements or all groups with uh, with only one element, and then we expand it array, uh, again to get all the all the list. And if there are many, then we have found uh, duplicates. More easy way to do this is again uh, to use the Enterprise Architect API combination with link and special custom extensions for duplicated. So here um, we get all the connectors of type part of which are duplicated to type project and if there are any yeah so if there are no then it's fine everything is fine if there are any then there is a violation good what can we do with uml profiles a short uh, intermediate summary um, it can extend uh, the language uml uh, with additional types like additional elements and additional connectors. Uh, and we can add uh, additional properties um, based on tag values. So what we can do is we can extend what already exists in Enterprise Architect. Yeah. Uh, we can also, which is not part of this talk, but we can also um, restrict something and say, okay, uh, in my modeling approach, I would like to have specific toolboxes and specific diagram types and specific views, perspectives, and so, uh, which is this part here. But this is addressed in another uh, webinar. We can define with a UML profile uh, alternate graphical representations. Yeah, we can add shape scripts and define our own language with our own notation. Uh, and based on the meta model constraints, we get automatic validations based on these constraints. Good. Um, with the help of an MDG technology, we can now bundle everything together. And an MDG technology is a kind of container, which can be used for many different things. So uh, this is actually what, what an MDG technology can be used for. So we can add images, we can add scripts, we can add uh, model transformation templates, or RTF templates, model searches, and, and many things else. What we have used, or what I have used here in, in this talk, I have just used UML profiles and meta constraints. And we can put this now together in an MDG technology in order for a simple uh, deployment. What what is recommended to do, uh, it is recommended to also add uh, diagram types and diagram toolboxes so that we have for our own language, we have our own diagrams. And if the diagram type is open, that the toolboxes are uh, automatically opened. And we can add uh, meta model views or few specifications in order to have subsets of uh, specific diagram types to make, make it, uh, again, more easy for the modeler uh, and to hide uh, everything which is not really required. Good. So what, what have we learned so far? We have learned that meta models are defined uh, using UML profiles in Enterprise Architect. But currently, 
it is not possible to to uh, add a, to to model a MOF based meta model. Of course, it is possible to model it, but not to use it as its own language. So meta models are are defined using UML uh, profiles. With a constraint meta model um, possibilities, we have the possibility to to gain uh, user interface uh, support. So enterprise architect user interface will support us to model according to this uh, UML profile and the contained constraints. And based on this constraint, the enterprise architect provides automatic model validations. And we learned that there are a lot of possibilities to extend these uh, model validations in order to get whatever uh, we like and uh, to, to validate the model um, with any uh, complex uh, model validation rules. And there is also the possibility to extend the Enterprise Architect API to make it more easy to write such rules. Uh, yeah, and therefore uh, look for the next edition of the modeling systems which, uh, which may contain this, uh, these possibilities with these extensions if you don't like to uh, write it on your own. So finally, we are happy to support you in uh, to, to bring your modeling approach uh, live in Enterprise Architect. A few recommendations about this series of talks, how to succeed uh, with your modeling approach in Enterprise Architect. There is already part one, uh, which is about the benefits uh, of a model-based specification and how you find a suitable modeling approach. The second part, uh, which uh, hopefully can be held in the end of June, it is about support to the modeling approach with meta models, constraints, and configurations. In this talk, I will also address how to get rid of all the parts uh, which are not required in my modeling, modeling approach and restrict Enterprise Architect to really only follow my specific modeling approach. And it's in part three, I will. Um, show how to, how to uh, extend the functionality of Enterprise Architect with additional wizards or automations in order to, to get a better uh, user support for your specific modeling approach. And this talk here is part 1.5, which is somehow in between. So it's, it's a, uh, the, the information which is required to, in order to, to get, to get the, into this uh, meta modelings, which is, uh, which will be taken in part two. Okay, and now we have a few minutes left and uh, um, I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Horst. Uh, thank you for taking time for all the efforts in making uh, such complex concepts easier to understand. It was uh, slow and steady and a lot clear even i am not much into tech but i was able to grab a lot more than i intended to okay we have a lot of questions uh, a few from the uh, webinar and a lot of questions are being posted in the team's channel we'll take up a few and i guess uh, you or uh, your team can take up the rest of the questions later mm -hmm. we'll start from the most recent ones Okay, a uh, question from Taras. I would like to learn more about meta models and MDG in EA. What sources you would recommend to start with? Um, yeah, maybe looking at the video again. <laughs> maybe this is an, um, a source. Of course, there are a few books uh, about meta modeling. Um, I can write, yeah, I will, I will write a blog article maybe about it and, and I will post a few more uh, resources. Uh, a good starting point is also um, maybe have a look at the UML meta model uh, and get, uh, because if you are a UML modeler, you know UML, and if you see the UML meta model, uh, you get into into the, the concept of meta modeling. But of course, the UML meta model is not the easiest one to read, yeah, to start with. Um, but I will post a few a few sources uh, to 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 get uh, more information about it. Okay, next one from Philip. Why could you not use OCL for model constraint validations? Yeah, OCL is actually not implemented in, in Enterprise Architect so far. Of course, there is the possibility to write OCL rules, uh, like 
if I go here, so when I go to a model element, yeah, here I can write constraints, and here I could choose uh, OCL, yeah, and here I can write OCL rules, and Enterprise Architect will validate if this text, what I'm writing, is a proper OCL, but this OCL is not executed, yeah. Uh, because if I do it here on the model level, actually the, the OCL will be executed on the next instance level, which is in this case the reality, yeah, or uh, instance specification. This is this is a, a, a gray area, yeah. But the point is that uh, there is currently no OCL implementation in, in Enterprise Architect. Okay, a related question from Jerry: For your additional constraints, can it be expressed in OCL? Sorry, one, uh, once again, please. For the additional, I guess maybe it's contextual and we are taking everything at the end. Uh, the question is for your additional constraints, can it be expressed in OCL? Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. So because um, what we have here is, um, Yeah, this is this is the meta model, and even in uh, in the UML profile, we can constrain um, we can we can constrain um, yeah actually yeah of course OCL is the object constraint language for for any model, so we can also uh, write OCL constraints for the UML profile. But the point is that it is just text in Enterprise Architect currently, so there is no implementation of OCL. Yeah, but we can use the Enterprise Architect API, API, and what what we did here is uh, to extend the Enterprise Architect API in order to to get a more OCL-like um, way to work with. Okay, I guess we'll take up one last question. Is uh, mm -hmm. is uh, this is one this one is from Dinesh? Is model validation rules uh, work using the SQL queries? How can we add custom rules by API with different C sharp add-in or do we have to do it the other way? Uh, okay, one, one, more, one, once, once, once more, please. <laughs> so uh, does, the, does the model validation rules yeah. work using SQL queries? And uh, how can we add custom rules by APIs with different C sharp add-ins? Yeah, so if th there is this where is it here this is the the add the the model validation framework uh, uh, an example uh, implementation of an add-in uh, which used the the model validation framework of enterprise architect i've already mentioned that these are the, the core uh, operations which are used yeah and uh, in order to 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 add model validation rules with this technique uh, you have to write an add-in write your, your rules, compile uh, your add-in, deploy your add-in, and um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. What, what we try to do, what we try to make it easier uh, with, uh, with the Libre Libre Modeling Assistance is to get, yeah, to, to make it more uh, user-friendly for uh, non-developers, non yeah. Okay. I guess we'll uh, take up the rest of the questions in the team's channel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I guess there is a lot of appreciation from you. I guess you should definitely go check it out. People are uh, uh, very happy about this presentation. And uh, thanks a lot for your efforts. And thanks a lot, everyone, for participating and uh, taking time to share your feedback so that that gives us a lot of motivation, not just to us, especially to the speakers to continue the good work they are doing. So thanks, Haas. Thanks all. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Chow.